Good evening viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in Bethan TV for health. We only deal in health. So if you're out there and you are wondering what is Bethan TV about, we are for health. And today it is the nutrition spot. We believe that we can transform our lives through what we eat, what we drink, what we do with uh, anything to do with food. So that's why we're here. And today it is the 8th of June. Yesterday it was the 7th of June. Yes, the 7th of June and it was the World Food Safety Day where we had a theme of uh, standard um, food standards to save lives. We believe that uh, if we have proper standards of how we handle and uh, uh, keep our food, we can be able to prevent a number of foodborne diseases or illnesses that come up with, with all these weird practices that we have while dealing with food. So tonight we honored to have um, nutritionists that are experts in this particular field of nutrition to make sure that they give us some heads up on how we can properly handle the food <laughs> we eat and uh, how we can keep it properly so i want to welcome each one of them to say hello to us but also give us their mind on uh, the world food safety day what did it mean for them you so much welcome each one of you saint ongo patrick you so much welcome and uh, nakalema sarah hello to our viewers patrick Hello everyone, my name is St. Ong Patrick. I work at Mukona General Hospital and also I part time with Impact Nutrition Company Limited. I'm Thank so glad so to be here to share my discussion about food security, I mean about food safety. Thank you so much for coming through Patrick. Yes, Thanks. Sarah. So good evening our lovely viewers. Um, the name is Nakalema Wini Sarah and it's really wonderful and nice to be here. It's, it's my passion to sh talk about nutrition and talking about food safety is really, um, I believe, I strongly believe that's an, something that we have neglected for some good time and it is very vital for our health. So it's time for us to get back to the roots. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So the, <laughs> the World Food Safety Day that is celebrated every single 7th of June every year to encourage producers, consumers, governments to be able to acknowledge the mutual responsibility of food safety. And the World Health Organization comes up and uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization together, they marked this day since 2018. And in 2019, that's when the day was officially commemorated with a theme of uh, food safety is everyone's business me i didn't know that it's a business <laughs> but they told us food safety is everyone's business and in year 2020 we were told that food safety still is everyone's business and in year 2021 we were told that food safety today for our health tomorrow that is so amazing and in year 2020 it was safer food better health and in year this particular year 2023 we were told that uh, food standards to save lives so if you look through the different themes that we've had even the previous years they are towards us having a healthy life and making sure that we observe the different measures and practices that are put in place for us to be able to observe food safety well with our experts in the studio as beth and tv we're going to go into details of what food safety is about but i want to urge each one of you to go onto our different social media platforms those that are watching us on youtube please make it a point to subscribe don't just watch but subscribe if you are on facebook kindly like and follow but also you can share with your other friends if you're watching us live in your sitting rooms or you are using the afro mobile app or your tv app or airtel app thank you so much if you're on youtube you can let us know where you are watching beta and tv from and if you have any questions or any submissions about our topic of discussion tonight also make it a point and post them into the comment section i want to thank so much the nutrition rehabilitation center i know the people are going to be on youtube asking us questions but with our experts in the studio they are going to be answered so i'm going to start with patrick to make us understand what is food safety i right, thank you gift so food safety it's not so complex it is basic so food safety it comprises of nutrition and food security where there is no where there is no food food where there is no food safety practices, proper food safety practices, there is no proper nutrients for someone to take in in the, in the body. So for a proper definition I can give, 
uh, food safety encompasses all practices that uh, all, all practices that uh, that that are good for handling, processing, and also storing food, such that someone has enough nutrients in their body to prevent them from any foodborne illnesses. So now, uh, as the WHO states, about a tenth of the world's population they suffer from foodborne illnesses, True. which is qu quite worrying. But yet, these are basic things that we can try to avoid. And, and among those uh, infections, over 400,000 die because of foodborne illnesses. And whereby 40% out of that number, it is the young children. But it's not only the young children below five years, but also the pregnant mothers. Awesome. So as we dive in today, we are going to discover and we understand food safety precautions and what we have to do to have like safer food practices. practices. Thank yes. you so much. You mentioned mm -hmm. a very important uh, aspect of that uh, food safety equals to the nutrients that uh, we take into our bodies so that means if someone is going to observe for safety it's hard yes. for them to get the proper nutrients so sarah yesterday it was the world food safety day what do you have to say about that day what does it mean for us as a country uganda um basing on the theme um food uh, standards save lives i believe um i really appreciate who for coming up with such a brilliant idea because um, such a day helps us to come back to the grassroots. Because um, I've had friends or people that didn't know about like food safety. They thought it was something minor. But when you share information and you tell them, hey, it was World Food Safety Day, they get encouraged to know more about it. And I believe yesterday we got to share information to all those people that are not privileged to get the information. So um, I believe we appreciate this day as nutritionists because as uganda like this is like a wake-up call for every individual out there that food safety is very vital like we were told in 2019 and 2020 that food safety is everyone's business well today on the show our very main objective is to raise awareness about the need for each one of you to follow the proper food safety measures and regulations and uh, the consequences just in any case we ignore the food safety practices mm -hmm. so i want to go back to sarah to make us understand um, who's a victim of poor food safety um everyone who takes in food is a victim now when i say everyone who takes in food everyone is affected okay um people normally look at it at this angle of i i eat like contaminated food or let's say i do not observe these food safety practices i have never fallen sick and it's okay i can keep mm -hmm. up with what i'm doing but people forget that Possibly you've not fallen sick, but someone else in your family is going to fall sick due to this uh, consuming the unsafe food. Now, if someone else in your family falls sick, the burden to cater for their health costs it's may come back to you. So that means each one of us is accountable. Everyone so. is accountable. Mm. We always like point fingers to the government. People have that saying, government mm. to Yambe. But thing. when you point the finger to the government, the government also needs funds or money to cater for the health sector. Now it comes back to us. Now when they raise taxes and they're like we're trying to get money to cater for the health sector, we are going to complain. Sure. But you realize in the long run that consuming unsafe food affects all of us in the long run. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sarah. If you mention that consuming unsafe food, mm -hmm. I think we should understand first and foremost how does it become unsafe? How can I tell that this particular food I'm consuming is not safe for me, not even for my family? Yes, Patrick. Yeah, so the food that is unsafe, how will you know it? For example, it comes, back, it comes way back from the producers. For example, I have a farm, maybe it has greens. So after like when I'm sun drying my greens and I put them on the ground, so you see from the producer, they're already laying them on the ground, exposing them to aflatoxins. Those toxins, they, as we are going to find out from later producers? on. producers? Yeah, the, like the farm producers. Uh -huh. yeah? 
so when they lay these grains on the on the ground like the beans the yeah maize. exactly mm. so the aflatoxins come in so when they develop aflatoxins these aflatoxins are carcinogens so they later on affect the populations later in life and as we are going to dig in today we are going to discover that even they do not only affect only adults but even in breast milk just breast milk a, a woman can give like give a child amphalatoxins through the breast milk because the research was carried out in Nigeria and Ethiopia and like there is evidence to show so from the producer then again you will find the transporter there like for example if let's say a boda boda man is carrying maybe matoke then the matoke falls down he'll pick it just pick it and rush up then carries it back not knowing that he has already exposed it to the to, 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 to other infections that can come in along the way. So that is the transporter. So now when it reaches in the market, in the market we have had this thing whereby people say, I hear sewage preserves fruits. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's there. Okay. Whereby, whereby people store some things like sugar canes where in the sewages. <laughs> that they preserve them for something uh, for some longer time they have a longer shelf life and and even cassava yeah but these are the markets that we buy from the same markets I, you have talked about cassava the more cassava falls down it you expose it to cyanogen which is a carcinogen you get that's our bit you feel eh? so in the long run it of course in the long run it will affect you that's why usually we don't recommend like to give a lot of cassava to young children because it can affect them more than it will affect an adult. Oh, really? So now all those foods they come to the final consumer. So it's like a, a whole supply chain. So the, fi the final consumer is this person that is going to the market that exactly. bought the foods and taken the foods home. Yes. So before they take the food home, let's let's now talk about these people that are in the market mm. setting. Yes. Because you might find, for example, you find grains and they are just put down there on the ground. Exactly. Maybe yeah. you find or uh, maybe cassava. Okay, mm. the different different foods. Mm. Or maybe when they are offloading the different, it could be Irish, any particular food, yeah. and it's it's fallen down pick it they they still want to sell it of course they can't discard it mm -hmm. so what do you have to say about such practices that are even so rampant in Uganda such practice it comes back to us individuals you get because like as she said if you don't give people prop, like safe food that means the cost will come back to you in one way or the other I'm in a family setting yeah like for example like what she said that if if let's say my brother has eaten unsafe food yet i'm the one who distributed the unsafe food that means the cost will come back to me to the hospital i'll have to provide the what the medical bills yet we can do something I, let me chip in something small uh, we have heard about open defecation in uh, in 2015 unicef situation analysis there was a study whereby they said a tenth of households in or they don't have a pick latrine like a tenth of the general population they don't have pick latrines where do they take their poop some people they take it to to the uh, the the, the lakes eh? even the lakes where they say enyanja <laughs> tenoga eh? so enyanja <laughs> tenoga but but again what they don't know that the feces will come back to them in one or the other because like this water body is like they connect everywhere we get water from from them in one or yeah, the other sure. hmm. yes so it's everyone's uh, it's everyone's like uh, uh, like the uh, obligation to fight against and save food so it ca uh, okay patrick maybe yeah. for you you've you've uh, mentioned the bit of where like we get food from mm. but sarah can you tell us this bit of for example i'm, I'm the consumer i'm the one having the final product i've gone to the market then i've taken the product back home how am i supposed to handle the food um before we even talk about you the consumer taking the product home or the food item at home you have a right i keep telling this to people if you went to someone selling a rolex and their towel is dirty you have a right to refuse that rolex because they have a dirty towel yeah. and you may you may take it as though you're being 
or are rude to this person but in the long run it helps their business because if like 10 people talked to this chapati guy wouldn't you think you would clean the towel mm -hmm. so you've gone to the market you've bought the food it is now at home um, first and foremost, before even we think about storing it, especially for our fruits and our vegetables, we should ensure that we properly wash them. I'm not talking about you getting a mango and just putting it under water and you like put it there and it's ready for consumption. You thoroughly wash these fruits and these vegetables. When it comes to the dry, the, the dry foods, let's say the cereals um it could the cereals it could be sugar it could be the tea leaves how are you storing them mm -hmm. it's not a matter of um in some homes you would go and they leave the sugar in the the polythene so anyone who wants to like get sugar will have to come and scoop and scoop mm -hmm. you realize you're exposing it to the environment you don't know what is in the environment you don't know if the environment or the air around that food is as clean as you think then we should also ensure we properly cook these foods like we thoroughly cook these foods foods this is an issue we have with um people that sell foods along the roadsides especially meats you come um you want to buy let's say some sausages or some beef someone is like roasting them alongside the road now um the issue might be some of them do not properly cook these foods because I have been a victim. At one point I went and bought chicken and I could see blood dripping from the chicken. Mm. <laughs> and secondly, the fact that they are not even covered, they're exposed to the environment. Cars are passing and there's a lot of dust particles in the environment. You're also exposing these foods to like these unsafe situations or conditions and someone is going to come and buy and consume immediately. Then when we are at home, how do you store these various foods? That is also an issue. Mm -hmm. um, we have all been in homes where by people eat leftovers. That is like typical African nature. Mm -hmm. We can't throw away food. But even though you're going to eat the leftovers, how have you stored them? We have individuals, uh, you had supper. Uh, you store it, you just left the food there. Sometimes they don't even cover it. You just like leave it there. Um, a case scenario I could give for our infants, like the children. Let's say they have been given a, uh, some feeds, possibly Irish, uh, smashed Irish, or let's say the porridge and whatnot. You give the child, and let's say the child is tired and they go to play. So you just call someone, put the food there on the table. So they'll, they'll come eat, back and, yeah. they'll come back and, and eat it. Yeah. From yes, there. and you've not stored it properly. You've not ensured that it is like safe. So this all comes back to the fact that food safety is everyone's business. Everyone is responsibility. Yes. Exactly. Like we said, mm. food safety, everyone is business. But well, if, 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 Okay, we're, going to we're not going to deny the fact that we are Ugandans and we are Africans mm -hmm. because there are certain things I feel like they are so much part of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For example, buying stuff on the roads, mm -hmm. maybe cassava, okay, cassava, yes, maize, mm -hmm. whatsoever, Rolex and all those other things. And also, some of us, we find it so hard to properly take time to clean these particular foods. Maybe it could be fruits, it could, it could be the vegetables. You want maybe uh, put water in a saucepan and then just dip them in <laughs> there and then you're done. So we do not have a proper criteria of how we're supposed to really clean this particular foodstuffs. But still, we do not look at the picture of anything might go wrong because we don't see that there and then. So make us understand what are some of, uh, what are some of the short term consequences or repercussions that are short term let's mm -hmm. now talk about that yeah. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes let's start okay. with a short term that can surface mm -hmm. if we do not properly uh, observe the measures of food safety so the shortest terms we can start we can start with um, the first thing you will have is like stomach ache your stomach telling you that there is something you have eaten that is not inside that is not supposed to be inside you get that means you have taken in some microbes that you're supposed to remove so the second thing will be in most cases diarrhea and it is it's very it's very common and evident yeah you can't tell. it's diarrhea 
that's then another thing that can come in we can have like headaches hmm? then cramps the like leg cramps then sweating then then the the other thing that can also come in is dehydration and when it comes to children below five dehydration is deadly True. to an adult it can take like a few weeks but to a child a child is so small so usually i tell my mothers once you have a child and they are dilating at least you, you take ORS for one day, then you come back to the hospital. So those are some of the like the short term things that can come in. But also, you know, they go on progressing when sure. you delay. Mm -hmm. Because like you can have inflammation of like the internal organs. For example, the pancreas can be inflammated. The colon can be inflammated. When you delay, the more you delay, like it becomes more severe and like acute. Maybe there is also a scenario as we get into a break that we've seen maybe uh, especially the mothers complaining of my child is having a fever, mm. my child is, uh, you know those on and off fevers yes. and sometimes they think oh maybe it's just flu or maybe it's cough so now in my mind I'm thinking <laughs> maybe mm. they ate contaminated food so let's get into a very quick short break we shall come back after the break. Thank you so much for joining us on the spot. Those that have just joined us, you are watching Bethan TV. My name is Gifty Nakainga. Today we're having our specialist, the nutritionist, that are handling this particular topic of discussion as food safety. We want to look at the proper measures that we're supposed to take or put in place to make sure that the food we eat or consume is very safe for us because we are saying that food standards to save lives so from today uh, moving forward make sure that in all that you do when you're handling food everything that you do around food is safe for you and for everyone in the community not even in your family so let's get back to understanding some of the long-term consequences that come up if we do not <coughs> properly take the measures that we are supposed to take when we are handling food i'm going to sarah to take us through um, so as i earlier said we have of course um long-term implications of this so um, basically living aside the short term and to supplement on this we are living in a society where people self-medicate I could get a stomach ache today and without even trying to find out the reason Why? I am already buying my drugs and I'm consuming or swallowing my medication so when we come to the um, long term um, I would really appreciate I think people would finally appreciate our food safety when they finally get to see some of the illnesses or the diseases that can be brought about by eating unsafe food one of um, the greatest fear we have when it comes to unsafe food are the cancers if anyone can take time to go to the cancer institute at mulago you'd really appreciate so we have this scenario I always want to bring up scenarios to make uh, our viewers better understand what I'm talking about. So we have uh, individuals that sell food along the roadside, uh, the deep fried food, to be specific, the fries and the fish. And I do not know if someone has ever taken time to look at the <laughs> cooking oil they are using. So with uh, cooking oil, if it is used for a long period of time and it's exposed to um, environment or to the air, it develops carcinogenic compounds or um, these compounds that can cause cancers. So me eating uh, the fries at one point in life may not really be an issue, but as I continue doing these things, it's building on, it's building on. And at some point in your 30s or late 20s when you go and they're trying to um, you're trying to get checked and they tell you possibly you have uh, cancer let's say breast cancer or it could be uh, colon cancer like we never know where these things come from True. but we never think about tracing them back to what we are consuming 
because now like i said we are Af- <laughs> okay i don't want we to are africa <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know because we first wait for things to get out of hand yeah. for us to be conscious for us to be keen for example like you would want to have people sit down and understand why is it important to learn how to prevent particular diseases and mm. people will be like no i'm not yet there yeah. if exactly. i get that malaria yeah. i'll mm. sit down and i'll learn how i can prevent malaria yeah. so but i think now it's time for us to get beyond that and maybe have this positive mind of that we can do better as africans not to wait for things to get out of hand you mentioned when you were starting that we shouldn't um call upon the government just like we say mm. government <laughs> 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 We shouldn't wait for the government, but still, maybe there are certain things that we cannot really get involved into, but the authorities can help so much. Mm. So what do you think as the, the government of Uganda can do to make sure that maybe particular measures are put in place to make sure that food safety is observed? So I, would, I do not want to rush and say the government has done nothing. The government has done something. (laughs) Though I feel the laws they have established are not properly enforced. Okay, so all the policies that have been put in place, maybe there is a gap. Let's know where there is, what causes the gap between the policy makers and maybe the people that are supposed to implement the the policies. Let me chip in a little. So now, okay, before, I think it, it was in the 1959 where uh, an act was proposed, which was the Drug and Food, the Drug and Food Act, but uh, and of which it was made into place in around 1964. But that was the Drug and Food. But when it reached 1993, <laughs> the, it it was made the Drug Act. So the food was dropped, <laughs> meaning that maybe the food wasn't important by then really so right now the only thing that saves us the the only things that save us the one is good <laughs> the second one it is U- unbs but you know unbs is not going to standardize like the local producer of these foods because these local producers of foods like these ones like the cottage industries yes. The farm, the local farmers. These are the farm. These people like they produce the highest percentage of the foods that we have in this country. Most of the foods come come, come like from their farms. But are they implementing these safety precautions? No. No. You will realize that even like most of our foods, they can't even cross borders. Wow. Yeah. Of recent, we have heard about the issue of Kenya, where they bounced our 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 maize because of our amphotoxins. Uh, some time back, I think it was in 2014 or 2015, mm-hmm. where there was where they bounced our fruits. Yeah, they bounced the the mangoes, the pineapples, because they were not reaching the standards of European Union. So these things come back to us. Okay, if if you're emphasizing. Okay, you want us to spare the government? Yes, let's spare the government. I, I, I can't speak for the government. I can't speak for <laughs> yeah. the government. Okay, they come back for us, but now, mm. to, to, to a person like me, to our viewer, maybe, mm. for you, I would say you're blessed to be a knowledgeable nutritionist that really understand why it's very key and very important. So to someone that is like me that do not understand that if I handle this particular fraud like this, I'll end up losing out on the particular nutrients that I, I was supposed to get in it how can you help them understand that bit that they should be very conscious if it comes to handling food um so on that issue um i'm one person that believes information and knowledge is everywhere you would realize that if you walked out of this place and interfaced or talked to someone and you had a conversation with them you could learn something new you you understand what i'm trying to say so Basically, um, I appreciate and I am thankful of the fact that I got like a chance to get this knowledge. And I am one person that is willing to share the that knowledge. knowledge. Mm. I, I believe uh, every nutritionist out there would really love to share the knowledge. Um, if we go to the hospitals, I'm sure some of the medical workers have this knowledge, knowledge with them. Sure. So. I do not want to say that people just do not go out to search for this knowledge, Mm -hmm. but I believe 
there are various sources of this knowledge. We have um, classes for those that study as early as primary, they're teaching some of these basic things, importances of cooking food, importances of boiling water. When we come um, to our daily life, even when you're done with school, interactions with your friends. <laughs> For example, if I'm a friend to someone and they inquire about food safety, I would share the knowledge. We have the internet. We have the internet. I do not know. Uh, if someone has ever sat down there and tried to get this information from internet and they got nothing. So I believe um, the information is there, maybe but it's just, just us not trying to. Or maybe we just not implement stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the, the, the sad thing about like internet is that we search for the wrong things. Yeah, because like internet has everything. Sure. It has both useful and useless things. <laughs> but it's upon you to find out what, what, what works, yeah, yeah, what is really important. Because it doesn't take a minute at all to, to get something from internet, then you inquire from the experts. You get. Okay. Nutritions are there. They are very dormant, <laughs> very many. So you can approach any. Because like, usually, you know, the world, most especially actually in developing countries, they see nutrition as only food people. The only thing you understand is cooking and eating food. <laughs> but it's quite bigger than that. Yes. Thank you so much. Eating, oh, you said eating, cooking, <laughs> eating food. You are watching the nutrition sport, and this is Beth and TV. For you today, we're talking about food safety measures. How can we properly handle the food that we eat? How do we have to keep it? Uh, the leftovers, they mentioned about the leftovers. How are we supposed to keep them? How are we supposed to? Uh, um, maybe get food from the garden people that sell foods in the markets how are you supposed to maybe even keep them so we say that food is very essential so ensuring its safety uh, can help us uh, be free from any potential hazards like we are said one in ten people suffer foodborne illnesses or diseases worldwide so that is uh, quite a big number if you put it in numbers and if we come here in Uganda it's so absurd that most of us suffer these illnesses knowingly but even because we have that good immunity the body fights and we be like oh okay, come okay I'm okay and you know you <laughs> but back to our um, experts in the studio make us understand how we can properly make our food safe at our homes especially now at homes because we might not have control over mm. people that are in the markets mm. but now let's assume I've gotten food from the market mm. and it's safe from there so reaching home how do I make it a point that it's not contaminated from my home so um, as you know safe food it has to be nutritious that means it has to contain all its nutritious nutrition nutrition value for example, now, uh, usually something that people usually play with, it is the vegetables. Mm? The vegetables. After bringing them, fru up, after bringing them <laughs> from the market, they just saw them there. The, the nutrients in the vegetables, the big group and vitamin C, those ones, the water-soluble vitamins, they can easily disappear. Just in a shock of sunlight, in a shock of water. So, the first thing, it's like, you have like, to, to watch your guard. The, the, you, wa you have to wash your, your vegetables and, and, and fruits well. That's one thing. Because most of even these vegetables and fruits, they are sprayed with pesticides. And you have to wash them thoroughly in order to take away the, the what? The pesticides. Then the other thing is cooking thoroughly. You have to cook them thoroughly. You, now we have uh, people who eat the other small animal. Yeah, the pork. And usually, they, they usually say, Zenjagala chigodo, njagala yes, chigodo. Yeah. If you don't cook that thing properly, you're exposing yourself to tapeworms. You get. So that's just a tip of the iceberg, but there are very many things you have to cook like thoroughly. You know, some people go to YouTube and they want to learn how to cook. Then they look at the, 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 how the, the whites <laughs> prepare the red meat, the, where the blood is flowing. Yeah, that, that is... <laughs> It's slightly grilled and they they feel that's alive the other guys they first treat it before it's it's cooked so for them it is safer for them 
but for are you going to go to to a supermarket and buy no no you will just buy the meat bring put to the table the and put in the saucepan you uh, all you you put on a, a grill or something and you want to make it like the way the whites made it mm -hmm. not knowing you're exposing yourself to microbes so and when you're storing them you have to store them at temperatures where they can't be attacked by maybe parasites vermin or anything that can bring in microbes for example if it's fish uh, those perishable foods you have to score to store them at chilling temperatures then if it's the grains and other things you have to store them away from air and also water so because if you expose them to air and water that means these aflatoxins and other things will come in and many things will come will come and you end up coming to our hospitals to work on you <laughs> Thank you so much, Patrick. Okay. Now, Sarah, I, 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 I believe our time is running for so fast, but I, <clears throat> I believe there is a lady, a woman, a <laughs> wife that is watching us. Yeah. And you know, okay, I will not talk about men because men don't usually come into these places where we cook from. Are you serious? Sam, <laughs> Sam, Sam, I'm saying Sam. But okay, it's a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> Sam don't, but mm. yeah. So it, 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 it's like usually uh, women are in there 24-7, but to some women, I think they find it hard to have that place cleaned well, yeah? Mm -hmm. So maybe as a nutritionist, and we believe now this person is the one that is taking care of the entire family in terms of what they are eating and because someone might not come to ask how did you prepare this given a scenario where you are at an event mm. you might not ask how did you wash the froth how did you you might not ask but this is a home setting i i believe we can take more precautions so how can you help such a lady who doesn't know that mm. if i'm supposed to um, i'm starting to cook this place is supposed to look like this and does it in any way contaminate our food if the environment is not clean um, it really affects the environment is one um, very vi okay it's a big source of all these contaminants all these things that make the food unsafe so it before you even think about preparing that particular food you're thinking about your environment should be safe Sh sorry should be clean the equipment or let's say uh, the saucepans the knife the ingredients themselves you're going to use for your food should be clean and washed then the person preparing take a case scenario i cannot how would you feel if i came and i was cutting uh, let's say uh, fruits for you making a fruit salad and i hadn't washed my hands and they were dirty so washing uh, personal hygiene is also key yeah. okay um, we, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a trend nowadays to have uh, uh, the cuticle, the long fingernails, and I, I don't have a problem with that. But people who have them and you prepare people's food, don't you ever stop to wonder that are <laughs> these particles going to go into the food people are going to eat and how safe are the people who are going to eat this food when they eat particles of the cuticle, oh, the cuticle. in the food? So there are small, small things that we neglect, but they are key. I, another case scenario, how would you feel if you went to a restaurant and you found hair particles in the food? I believe that would be a very serious turn off. As much as you had the appetite, you try to imagine where all these things came <laughs> from and, <laughs> and the appetite that is there came. and then. So, um, I want like our viewers to try to put themselves in those scenarios. Yes. When you're doing something, when you're just preparing food for for your people, try to put yourself in their shoes. How would you feel if you got food that was prepared in such a manner? Okay, maybe then another thing. Mm. <clears throat> We've um, in so many families. Mm. Yes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, there is a tendency of uh, okay. Some families, mm -hmm. but there are many. I said this, so you have one knife yep. that you use to cut your meat, <laughs> to cut your fruit, mm -hmm. <laughs> to cut your everything. So yeah. I think I've ever, I've, I've, I've ever heard uh, someone say that it's not safe because it somehow spoils yes. the foods and all that. So can you explain that to us and how bad is it? Should we have like 10 of them at home <laughs> such that this is for the fruits, this is for the vegetables, this is... Uh, yeah. 
uh, that's quite easy but and basic but people take it for granted uh, because if you use the same knife you realize okay when mothers are cooking they are they are chopping meat then at, at the same time they're eating a mango they're chopping a mango and, and they're, they're using eating. the same knife in the sigit exactly <laughs> yes so you, you know most of these uh, animal proteins okay I, uh, it's not restricted to only that but most of the animal proteins they contain microbes that are very dangerous in our bodies you if you want to, okay if you want to be an experiment of yourself you try eating raw meat you try eating it the, the, that moment you vomit and you diarrhea it. Why? That means there is something you have to cook. That means if you carry <laughs> the fair. microbes to the mango, it's like you're eating raw meat. Mm. Yes. So it's called cross-contamination. Cross contamination. Yes. So if, let's say you have one knife, first chop the meat, wash the knife, go and eat your mango. Because it's better for you to, sa to save any money in this crisis than to go to the hospital than just eating unsafe food. Thank you so much. Um, as we wind up, actually, mm. let's wind up. What okay. you have to say in less than a minute. Okay. <laughs> so I would like to tell our viewers out there that um, let us go past this notion of um, thinking, okay, taking these things lightly. These things are very, very important. Us as health workers who get to interface or meet people that suffer due to these small, small illnesses get to really see the implication and how severe these things are. So to our humble viewers, um, I go back to a point I said, if you do not have enough information regarding these issues, information is out there. Please search for the information. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yes, uh, Patrick, in less than a minute to the viewers. Okay. Um, to our humble viewers, I hope you're listening well. These <laughs> things count. You know, as my <laughs> boss usually says, small things count. So, uh, so food safety starts from, from like personal hygiene, and it goes like way broad. So you start with those small, small things. You leave those things where like, you'll be like, Ah, uh, who cares? As long as I make money, it's not ab about money, money yeah. because you may end up making the money, but uh, on the other hand, you're letting it out. So let us all be vigilant. In case you're seeing unsafe food, please speak out. And for all the nutritionists out there, food scientists, ag agriculturists, let them come out and speak about food safety. Thank and you so much. And also to our government, please come and help us. <laughs> Impose, impose policies <laughs> that can help like people strengthen these like food safety measures. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank mm. you so much, Sarah. And uh, <clears throat> to our dear viewers, thank you. Thank you so much for making it a point to tune in Bethan TV and be able to learn about food safety. Well, we can, so, we can say so much about food safety, but I believe that uh, the little that we've spoken tonight on the show, you will be able to put it into practice and into consideration. So I want to wish you the best of that time and the night. Till next Thursday, be well. Oh, okay.